In the timeless words of Einstein, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. The same can be said of hair loss. I am making BS and this is Back to the Barber. I remember standing in the mirror with the clippers loudly buzzing about to perform the inevitable. For years I watched my hairline recede while the top of my head and crown thinned out so bad that I could no longer wear the man bun that I had been accustomed to. Long were the days that I could style it differently depending on my mood or the occasion. Long were the days that I could shave it off knowing in a few months that it would grow right back. Long were the days that I could look in the mirror without using my hands to attempt to comb or brush hair to thinner areas to cover the blatant problem. At that point, nothing I could do would hide the fact that I was balding. My only recourse was to shave it as low as possible and try to make myself believe that it was my style of choice, that it was indeed my new mature look. Belief is a powerful thing. Suggestion is a powerful thing. Those were the magic wands waving away what I'd rather not see. How about you? Remember the dull pain that shot through you when you saw the numerous hairs and strands on your pillow or the shower floor? Remember when she ran her fingers through your hair that day and you did not feel love or lust but shame? Remember the real regret bubbling up from some make-believe scenario in your head where you could have changed your diet years ago or gotten a transplant before it got to this severity level? Was that a trick of the mind? Let's follow the white rabbit and see. Have you noticed a hyperfixation with other men's hair and believing hair loss was the reason why it didn't happen? Whatever it was, rather there's a job, promotion, a new client, or even a relationship. Your confidence has taken more hits than the bottom of the monoxidil bottle, squeezing out the last drop of hope. You, like me, Feel like you were or are on a one-way train to balding and there are no other stops. And now you just have to deal with the cards that you were dealt. But what if I told you despite what things look like, despite the course that you have been on, despite what everyone else believes to be true, despite what you have been told and sold, despite the very experiences that you have experienced, what if I told you that everything is not what it seems in hair loss. And the idea that it is permanent and irreversible is a mirage, a phantasm that causes you to see hair loss as a genetic rites of passage that men undergo at various ages and stages, but it's quite the opposite. What if I told you the path through Norwood patterns are not mandatory, but actually voluntary? What if everything that you believe about this supposed disease has been just one big lifelong hypnotic suggestion, an innocent delusion, a well-meaning fantasy, simply an illusion. In this video, I would explain this hair loss phenomenon in a very broad scientific way from my understanding, research, and experiences. I am going to piece together seemingly simple facts that will place male pattern balding and androgenic alopecia in the right context so that you can develop the confidence and understanding that all is not lost. That not only you have the ability to halt hair loss, but regrow it at any severity level and after any amount of time has passed. Like the switch in magic where one object is exchanged for another without the audience noticing, we need to switch our belief in male pattern balding from inevitable and irreversible to controllable. The permanency of hair loss is but a persistent illusion that will fade into oblivion when you accept this simple truth. It is not a disease, but a conditional state. And when that state is radically shifted or changed, the hair cycle process automatically reinitializes just like magic. It is the greatest show on earth. The fact of the matter is, 
Androgenic alopecia is not scarring alopecia. Scarring is what makes an organ unrepairable or almost unhealable. The lack of hair creates the illusion that the empty follicles are dead, but they are just in a state of telogen. The state of rest before the state of growth is initiated. When you sleep, you are resting, not deceased. A dead follicle, like any other organ that cannot be healed, would have to be removed, yet you haven't had any surgeries for dead follicle removal. Ask yourself this question. Is there any other failed or dead organ in my body that I could just leave without it becoming fatal eventually? So what you have accepted is, the scalp follicle is the only organ in your body that in its death and decomposition, it has no effect on the other living cells. That evolution will leave thousands of follicles to decompose on one of the most important parts of your body near the brain. But in all other cases of irreversible damage, we would amputate or remove the body part to stop the spread. You have been under a strong illusion that you have dead follicles when in actuality, they are in a coma state, unable to transition to antigen due to environmental conditions. This is why you simply lose hair over time. Miniaturization by malfunction. Moment by moment, degradation by degradation, they deactivate, not die. If follicles truly died, you wouldn't need finasteride, but a dermatopathologist and a surgery date. You are awakening to this fact. I suggest that you incorporate it into your psyche. Follicle death is an illusion, but it's not the only one. There's a sleight of hands at play here in hair loss. It's subtle, but works every time. While our attention is on the hair loss or quantity, it is the follicles that we should pay attention to. But even when we focus our attention on them, we miss the fact that even that is sort of a misdirection. The follicles follow the gut or the immune system. We hear alopecia and immune, immune and alopecia. We see this played out amongst all animals in one form or another. Hair loss, hair thinning, hair fall, fur loss. None of it has been regarded as permanent. Most of it is said to be reversible, but how? By changing the conditions of the skin or even more ironic, dealing with the dietary changes of the organism in some capacity. Did you notice the switch? Yet we hear androgenic alopecia and suddenly, like some hypnotic switch placed in our minds, we hear balding due to genes. An immune response goes out of the window. Making this mental jump even more bizarre, the same solutions and products used for all other alopecias are also used in male pattern balding or androgenic alopecia. The difference? We are not giving anything over the counter for immune response by our physicians, only prostate meds and vasodilators while other alopecias are also given immune-based therapeutics. In magic, the ditch is when an object is thrown out or hid somehow, creating the illusion that it disappeared or changed. I guess that is the immunity response's contribution in men's hair loss. It's like a trance that we have been placed under to make us believe that we are somehow overcoming our internal genetic traits or overriding our DNA using a peel or topical but we can't skip a few days of brushing our teeth without smelling our bad decision. DNA having anything to do with hair loss is an illusion, when in actuality, it has more to do with entropy through inflammation, if anything. As far as the depressing day in the mirror, I felt like I had already lost the battle, so I went ahead and shaved my head. I remember looking to the left and right and viewing my new permanent style after buzzing it. I then grabbed a small mirror to view the back and realized now that it was cut lower than before, the hair loss looks even more pronounced. I shaved it even lower, erasing balding and finally accepting being bald. So I thought. Even at that time, I did not fully convince myself that this is what I truly wanted. But like many of you today, I was under the illusion that it was my only choice. That the show was too soon over and the curtains were being drawn. I was wrong and most of our hair loss professionals are unfortunately still closed-minded, but you don't have to be. If you hadn't noticed already, I do not go into specifics currently on how I use the tools and solutions that I have created. In the near future, I will, but I'm not saving the best for last at all. The best is now. There is nothing greater in hair loss but the ability to restore it in full. 
I understand that once you become truly free of the illusion of the permanency of a hair loss and the fact that all is not what it seems in balding, the possibilities of potential therapeutics are limitless, like the amount of times and magic that rabbits have been pulled out of hats. If you made it to the end of this video, you have followed the white rabbit to your new beginnings. You will make connections and observations that will lead you to the same, if not more concentrated, undeniable truths in hair loss. When it clicks, and it will, is when the magic truly begins. You would graduate from the passive audience to the magician yourself, waving a wand of action and dispelling the myths of hair loss while disappearing any vestige of doubt in your mind that you can get your high school hairline back. The hypnotic spell of the traditionist has now been broken over you. Like, share, comment, and help spread the message to others who suffer from the same fiction that we've been fed. Iron sharpens iron, and we only have each other. And remember, if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the barber.